Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, we are we represent a company called CP Polyurethane, who are pioneers in uh, the field of floor coatings since 1976. And uh, we are basically distributors for them in Tamil Nadu. And our company name is Swati Engineering Agencies. For the last 16 years, we have been associated with CP Polyurethane as distributors for Tamil Nadu and uh, Uttaranchal. And uh, my colleague, Mr. Suresh Kumar will explain in detail about the products. Yeah, thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, today we are going to talk about uh, flow toppings, basically the co flow coverings. What what are the protective ways of covering the floors? And uh, I'll just go about the different kinds of toppings available in the market and what we also handle. And uh, we'll also discuss about how do we select these toppings also. And what kind of floor, uh, what toppings are suitable, and uh, and and from there we'll go on, and we'll take questions in the last from you people. Okay, thank you. CP uh, Polyurethane by itself is, as he introduced, it's about 30 years or 35 years in the country. They are the people who bought in polyurethane coatings to the country. In 1976, it came out with a coating grade of polyurethane, which 100 microns coatings. And then slowly they developed into epoxies, and then they de developed EPU floorings, uh, and then they came into poly polyurethane concrete floorings. So we'll just go one by one. What what is all available in the market? This just gives you a brief about how they started in 1976, and today the uh, the slide in the last in the right side shows what is the factory in uh, Pune in 2012. These are some of the products which they handle, like flooring, ESD flooring, deck coatings, then uh, concrete sealers, protective coatings, wall coatings, spray applied polyurethanes, then uh, polyureas, OE supplies of paints, clear coating, waterproofing, adhesives, sealants, and grouts. All these products, are basically, if you see, they are all protective uh, to any surface you take it. Either you take concrete, you take steel or you take any uh, masonry uh, surface, anything. It's all protective uh, product for any kind of surfaces. Now, we are going to concentrate only on floor in this session. Now, in uh, flooring, generally there are three different kinds of uh, materials used. One is polyurethane, epoxy, EPU, and there is a mo moisture cu uh, curing urethanes, and there are different acrylics, and then polyurea and polyasphatics. Now in CIPI, we classified into, these products are classified into different brands we have it by ourselves. Like for example, polyurethanes are called floor coats and uh, epoxies are called sipoxy range of products and then EPUs are called, epoxy polyurethanes are called sipothanes and PU concrete is called duracrete and U coat is again a polyurethane single component coating and aqua wood is for the protective for wood coatings for wood and flooring and all that. Securia is again a protective coating for uh, big pipelines cross country pipelines where it goes under the earth and it's been buried for about even 20 years 25 years it stays there for a protective uh, layer and poly, poly seal is again a sealant which used for protective of all the gaps in the concrete surface. Yeah, these now when we come to new generation flooring, that is the, uh, what is available today if you see epoxy floorings as I told you, there are these are different kinds epoxy, EPU, polyurethane, epoxy and polyurethane floorings, ESD floorings and then polyurethane concrete floorings, then green floors, then polyasphatic floorings one day flooring and then density polished flooring and then the called deck coatings. These are the different ranges of products available as of now in the market. For example, epoxy flooring, we have it in the name called Sipoxy SL, Sipoxy SL1000. The main feature of this is excellent addition, it has got excellent gloss and then self leveling properties and the good chemical resistance, it is a food grade coating and then it is suitable for pharmaceuticals and food processing industries and it is moisture insensitive. These are some of the features of 
epoxy floorings. The next one is the sipothin, I mean sipothin acyl which we call it as EPU floorings. Now by the look of it all these floorings actually look alike, it is only the chemistry changes and there is a physical property advantages in each of these floorings. Like for example this is insensitive to moisture whereas your epoxy flooring was sensitive to moisture, the main difference if you see. It is highly flexible here whereas the epoxy floorings are little rigid and it is not flexible. It has got a very good abrasion resistance, impact resistance and it has got a high gloss and self leveling properties also. And then it is it's a flexi, it is a fast setting and a flexi hard material like when you say fast setting during epoxy it takes about 4 to 5 hours for it to initial set whereas this epoxy polyurethane floorings will, have, will take about 2 to 3 hours it will set as soon as you lay it. The third one is the polyurethane floorings which is the this is actually the first uh, people to produce polyurethane flooring in the country SAP and this pro product has got a very good abrasion resistance compared to epoxy and EPU. When you take the in, in uh, industrial flooring or any kind of flooring the first property what people look as for abrasion and this polyurethane flooring is gives you a very good abrasion, it has got an excellent chemical resistance and it has got a very good impact resistance in comparison with the other floorings. Now I am just going through these things first and then we will talk about what are the uh, properties and what are the advantages of these products. This the fourth one is the epoxy PU flooring, it is basically a physical combination of the flooring. When I say EP stroke PU means it is epoxy stroke PU, the epoxy is a base layer, the primer and the screed and then you give a top coating which is the polyurethane. Now why do you do this is? Uh, epoxies by nature it has got a very good addition on the concrete surface. So you are taking the benefit of an epoxy for the addition which is the base and then you are going on top of it with a polyurethane coating which gives you a very good abrasion resistance and impact resistance. So you are trying to use the best of what is available in the market. So this is another thing which is called EP and PU floorings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Like uh, this is the epoxy self level floor, on top of it we are given a clear coating. The color looks the same but here the abrasion resistance is very high because we are coated with polyurethane. You may from there you may not able to see that but on usage you will find a drastic difference. This is epoxy self leveling and this is a clear coated epoxy I mean uh, polyurethane over an epoxy self leveling half half. I mean the slide also shows you a picture of what how it is constructed. The next is uh, I think this is the fifth in the list which is the ESD flooring, it is called electrostatic dissipative flooring. This is used in most of the electronic industries where the manufacturing of mobile phones or electronic equipments this particular product is used, this is actually to dissipate whatever the eddy current which is developed on the floor. There are two kinds of coatings available in ESD, one is conductive and the other one is uh, static dissipative and there are two resistivity with two attached to it, one conductive is to uh, till 10 to the power of 6 it is called conductive and anything between 10 to the power of 6 to 10 to the power of 9 is static dissipative and anything above 10 to the power of 9 is insulative which is the normal epoxy or polyurethane floorings are. These are some of the advantages of uh, epoxy, I mean uh, ESG floorings. It is uh, it's durable, it has got a good conductive level, it is uh, low maintenance and it is easy and does not have any joints as any other epoxy, I mean ESG tiles are there. And the next one is the polyurethane concrete flooring, uh, we call it Duracrete, basically this material is used where the, where the flows are really abused, when I say abused in any industrial atmosphere the floor is not maintained as it has to be, the, they drop uh, I mean hammers, they drop uh, uh, what any metal parts, the uh, machining uh, leaves all the burrs on the floor, so it gets damaged on the floor, they roll a, a 200 litre barrel or anything. So where the abuse of the floor is very high and maintenance becomes difficult, we uh, suggest them to go in for a PU concrete floor, it is basically water based system, directly you do on the floor and leave it for about 24 hours it is ready for you to use. 
the main advantage is like it, it's very fast setting and it uh, very good abrasion resistance so you don't need the downtime on um, i mean making this particular floor is very less because it sets very fast and it's ready for your production activities immediately the next one is a very uh, nice uh, system which is called the green flooring where everywhere today we talk about green flooring green environment eco friendly floorings and all that products so sipi we also have a product which is uh, sipox aqsf which is a green flooring when it's when we say green flooring basically it doesn't have any voc content it is basically water based it's water thinnable easy to use yeah uh, it's easy to apply even in a closed room normally any epoxy or a polyurethane is applied on a floor in a closed room like this it's difficult for the applicators to do because the smell which comes out of the solvents uh, so what we do this particular system it becomes very easy for people to apply and during any activities also if suppose we having a spray he can apply on that side so it's not going to affect us because the smell is zero actually and it cures very fast and it is breathable also when i say breathable your concrete normally is uh, a breathing system i i mean uh, it's it sort of breathes out the uh, moisture uh, whereas when you do a epoxy or a polymeric flooring you are actually sealing the entire system so what happens is there is a failure in epoxy is, is only because of this moisture which is entrapped in the concrete so what we we give this as a solution to peer, where wherever you have this particular failure or where you are looking at uh, 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 environmental friendly system so it it allows the moisture to breathe through the system itself so it doesn't allow there is no possibility of any bubbles formation and it is a user friendly system so green flooring and uh, this is a new uh, uh, system which is there which is a polyasphatic flooring this polyasphatic flooring is new to the country it's about only about uh probably a year in the in india this is actually a a there is a diff, there's another system called polyurea there's polyurethane there's polyurea that that's not used for floorings basically it's used for waterproofing or it's used for actually uh what do you call for any kind of protective coating where it is going to be there for 20 years or 25 years and all that it forms about 1 mm to 2 mm thickness uh lining itself and it's not applied by brush it's you use Uh, a, a specialized uh, spray equipment where your resin and the ardna it mixes in the tip of the uh, nozzle and it's the target so it sets in, in about about 10, 10 seconds to, 10 to 11 seconds seconds it sets the idea is to build a thickness of about 1 mm you need to have multiple layers in normal epoxy or polyurethane whereas in a polyurea you don't need to do it in one stroke you might build about 1 mm also so the why i'm saying that that is one end of poly uh, coatings and there's something called polyurethane polyasphatic is between that it takes benefit of both polyurea and the polyurethanes so where we suggest this flooring is where the abrasion resistance is required is very very high but in today's market the but the cost aspect of this is slightly more so probably people don't really appreciate it as of now but in the future definitely this is going to be a product of where most of the industries will go in for if you read this it's a combination of polyurea and uh, aliphatic uh, polyurethane overcoming practical difficulties of polyurea when i say practical difficulties means it's not user friendly to apply polyurea you need that particular spray mach machine that machine cost about 20 to 25 lakhs and you need a trained applicator to do it so it, it uh, this particular uh, polyasphatic overcomes that particular problem and at the same time it gives you uh, the a uh, good abrasion resistance and uh, a clear flooring and these are the some features excellent wear resistant flexible enough to bridge concrete cracks self leveling and excellent gloss uv stability superior chemical resistance rapid return to service when i say rapid return to service is like once you do the flooring you don't need to wait for it to cure it's probably another one or two hours it's ready for you to operate on that particular floor and then it's bubble free flim and cures at low temperature during rains and then achieves optimum properties within few hours when this particular property which cures in low temperature during uh, rain means in chennai probably we don't feel that effect of this particular product in the north in delhi or in uh, somewhere in the uh, i mean himachal and all that where the temperature comes down this epoxy floorings don't set 
there are times where people go do your uh, screening leave it for 2 days and come back just for it to set. So whereas this particular product it sets even in a cold climate because it is chemically curing is happening in this and that is why we call another term we give this is actually called one day flooring because these particular products is like uh, there is a combination of system which we recommend to people where you do not have much time for you to uh, give it for us to do the flooring we say use this particular combination that is one day flooring with polyasphatic as a top coat you will be able to finish it in less than one day less than 24 hours. Earlier we used to take minimum 72 hours to complete these kind of floorings nowadays companies do not have that, that much time they give us only few hours or maximum one full day that is a Sunday so that is called maintenance time for them. So this one day flooring is come into vogue because of the very less time they give. We, we have to prepare the surface, do the primer, screed, top coat all has to happen and it has to cure within the 24 hours. So this is a challenge we took it and CP has developed this product. When we say one day we take half a day for surface preparation which is a very very important thing and the rest half like for example we have a primer which will cure within one hour and we have a screed which will cure within four hours and the top coat which will cure within five to six hours. So the entire process takes about 10 to 12 hours and the balance 12 hours is for curing. So even if you get the floor on a Sunday morning, Monday morning it is ready to use. This is the first time in India this product is launched and, uh, and very well taken in ind industries and nobody else in India has this product. So if you take uh, epoxy people they take about 48 to 72 hours and any flooring any company which we cannot afford to give that, that much of time cannot do flooring at all. So such of those people we recommend this kind of flooring and it has worked very well. Um, I, there's, uh, this one day flooring it gives you a uh, combination of benefits of uh, epoxies, uh, PU, polyurea and uh, for example bond strength is as good as epoxy because in any benchmark epoxy has got a very good bond strength compared to any other property. So this particular flooring will have the bond strength as like an epoxy, aesthetics as like an epoxy, flexibility as like a PU that is because it gets from the polyurethane, wear resistance like a polyurea coating then crack bridging ability is like a PU. It just gives you an idea of what is the system there is a primer there is a screed and then the top coat. The uh, primer is an epoxy primer and then you have a water bound PU that is the uh, middle coat intermediate coat and then the top coat is polyasphatic. This gives a typical work schedule for one day flooring like morning 10 o'clock you start your surface preparation 10.30 you do your primer then about 11 o'clock you can apply your screed the screed is ready for your uh, about 4 or 5 hours curing is enough and then at 5 o'clock you do your top coat and then you 8 o'clock it is ready ne I mean next day morning it is ready for the facility owner to use the floor. So it just gives you an idea how long does it take to complete this one day flooring. The next comes this one this is this is not a polymeric coating but this is something we call a density polished flooring it is basically on a concrete floor we actually use uh, lithium silicate uh, we spray the lithium silicate on the floor and then buff it for about 4 or 5 times to give a sheen on the floor. What does this do is basically it is a floor hardener liquid floor hardener which goes into the concrete it sort of blocks all the porosities of the concrete and it sort of densifies the concrete that is why they said density polished floor it densifies the concrete once that is done you, you polish the floor there is different grades of polish uh, grids available you polish it about 4 5 times you get a, a glossy finish on the floor. It gives a very good uh, uh, sheen its aesthetics is good it does not have any kind of uh, a flim formation so there is no question of any flim peeling off from the floor and it is sort of a lifetime it is going to be the same how it was in the beginning of the project. This is, these are some photographs which shows you how is it is done the first photograph is the machine which we use for the grinding the next is just the machine itself and the next uh, photograph is how it has been applied the uh, densification. 
So these are three steps grinding and then you have the densification hardening and then you have the polishing. And this is how the floor, you can see the sheen on the floor, it is just basic concrete floor done with just uh, 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 floor art and then polished. So there is no coating on it, there is no uh, any layer film formation on the floor but still gives you a, such a good gloss on the floor. The next one is the deck flooring and this is very, I mean it is about one year old in Indian conditions because normally uh, epoxy or any kind of these coatings are not done in car park areas or something. This basically is done on car park areas. The entire car park flooring, the side walls, the ceiling and the pillars, everything is done with all the markings on it. The reason you need to do this is as uh, uh, the, the carbon actually which comes out of your car, car's uh, exhaust and all that, it actually affects the concrete rebars in a long run. And there are case studies abroad where the entire structure has collapsed because of this. Basically it is an anti-carbonation coating which you do it on the floor and normal anti-carburation coating does not have the abrasion resistance which you cannot do it on the floor. So you need to do something more like a polyurethane or an epoxy deck flooring on the floor and then the walls also have to be covered so that you are protecting the concrete from uh, corrosion or erosion of the because of these carbon deposits on it. And this is a very very important thing but today it is slowly catching up in Mumbai about 4-5 uh, car parks they have done, in Chennai about 1 or 2 we have uh, done, it, but it has to come, it, this is going to be a future where I feel that people like you should be able to recommend this as a, a solution to most of the buildings which are coming up in uh, the country. This basically application area as I told you is car park decks, drive rails and then ramps, walkways, internal exponer, uh, exposed deck areas. And we also do all these uh, stencil work like people walking or you want to mark the floor with a yellow line or a green line to demarcate it with uh, where the car is to be parked on the railways or something. And this is this the last one is actually most of the uh, flooring done today is like uh, you do not, it is not done on the new surface. It is a, a lot of places where you it is been used for 30 years suddenly today they want to do some kind of a covering to protect the floor. In those areas we need to have a flat floor to do anything on top of that. So we use these kind of repair mortars, basically these are epoxy and polyurethane based. You can fill the uh, potholes, undulations and all that with this particular uh, mortar. So it sets within about one or two hours and it is ready to do uh, another layer of epoxy or you can just leave it with it also as a temporary measure and you can do it later. So it is basically repair mortars used for a quick uh, filling up all the undulations and potholes in any industrial atmosphere. And now we come to the, we have seen about six, seven uh, kinds of different floorings. Now we just come to the properties, what are these properties of these uh, things. For example, you go to hardness, now we have, we have seen all these epoxy flooring, EPU flooring, PU flooring, EP stroke PU flooring and this is the hardness which is given here. So for it, this is basically made to understand these are the properties of these flows and now from based on this you can choose your application. This is wear resistance, abrasion resistance for all the different kinds of uh, floorings which we explained. For example if you see in this EP stroke PU flooring has got about 10 to 15 milli grams loss. Now let me explain about this abrasion resistance. As you see in the picture this uh, sample is done, I mean for example, a sample is uh, coated and this sample is weighed first before, uh, before you would, uh, do the test. Uh, suppose this sample is about 100 grams and then what you do is you put this sample on that particular machine and then put a 1 kg weight of uh, abrasion media and rotate it for about 1000 cycles. So what happens is after 1000 cycles you take the sample out and again weigh it, the difference in weight gives you loss of weight in this particular sample. The more the weight loss, the lesser abrasive resistant it is. The lesser the weight loss, the lower the abrasion resistance. So the better abrasion resistant it is. So here if you see a PU, generally polyurethanes are very good abrasive resistant material. 
compared to epoxy. Now when you say uh, for a, just to give an idea uh, plain concrete it is about 700 milligrams per 1000 cycles. So in comparison to a plain concrete to understand this this is only 70 or 10 or 20 milligrams losses per 1000 cycles. This method is called Tabor abrasion method. So that is that is a machine what you are seeing in the site and uh, it is the wheel is a CS17 wheel to abrade the sample what is shown. Then dust proof every coating whatever we have seen till now is all dust proof coatings right from your epoxy to deck coatings everything is a dust proof coating. When I say dust proof there is no dust developed from the flow obviously when dust is generated otherwise it comes and settles that you can't avoid but it does not de develop dust from the flow. Chemical resistance again polyurethane concrete and the one day flooring is go has got a very good chemical resistance compared to the other things. Here we asked the client to give us the data is about what is the concentration of the chemicals used, what are the types of chemical used first then the concentration and what works for this will not work for the other. So we take all the data and then we give a customized solution. So this is a speciality of CP because they have all the ranges what the world, world, world can offer but it cannot be a one stop solution when it comes to chemical flooring. The next one is static load resistance that is the compressive strength. Uh, your PU flooring has got a very good compressive strength with about 100 to 120 mega MPa mega Pascal compared to your density floor which is just density floor does not have any kind of a coating it is just your concrete which is about 20 to 30 MPa. Next is the impact resistance here we have a sample here for you to see. This, uh, this sample is done on an EPU flooring. Here you can see there is a dent here, uh, this is actually it is done it says here a 40 LB thing which is dropped from one particular height 40 inches height and uh, you it creates a dent on the coating but the coating is still intact. So it shows the flexibility of this particular coating both, both in uh, what do you call the positive side and in the negative side also. So this is like impact resistance here if it, if it says whether it passes or fails for example EPU it passes epoxy it fails because the epoxy is a very hard material which actually it is very when I say epoxy these, these are epoxy screeds when you say this is very hard so anything dropped on this is going to give a crack on the uh, coating whereas a, a polyurethane or an EPU is flexible so it gives it, it sort of passes the impact test. Next is a bond strength on the concrete most of the coatings most of the uh, uh, coating which we saw actually, pa actually passes the con uh, addition test that is the bond strength. The concrete fails when you say concrete failure means the test when you take the coating out of the uh, uh, your concrete that it comes along with the concrete. So it does not come as a flim actually so that if the bond strength is good it has to come along with the concrete. Slip resistant is very good in all the coatings which we have seen so far and these are the business segments normally recommended what kind of uh, flooring we can go. For example automobile and automobile ancillaries EPU flooring is normally recommended because it is got the flexibility and it is it's got the self leveling property also. So you go for EPU flooring and it is got a good abrasion resistance and then in pharma you go for this epoxy mostly it is epoxy and EPU is done in the utility areas. Epoxy is because you do that because it gives a very high gloss and in pharmaceuticals that is what they want cleanliness and they want high gloss finish and long longevity of the gloss also is better in epoxies. And then in food industries you can go in for EPU epoxy or PU concrete, light engineering PU flooring or EPU flooring, heavy, heavy industries again you can select PU or EPU depends on what, what is the uh, um, requirement of the client because as far well the cost is concerned if you see epoxies if suppose epoxies are 100 rupees EPUs will be about 10 percent more and polyurethanes will be another 10 percent more. So it, it, it basically 
depends on what the client is looking at it. Um, EPU and PU will complement each other uh, by, by because most of the properties are more or less the same except for the chemical resistance where PU is a better chemical resistant flooring. In car parks, deck coating, deck flooring. In aviation, EPU mostly it is EPU. Hospital and health areas, it is epoxy. In fertilizers, is acid resistant coatings or PU coatings. In IT and electronic industries, are ESD flooring. And steel, steel and varo, uh, steel it is polyurethane flooring. In warehousing, you we recommend uh, a density flooring, which is the floor hardener, which you use, and then you polish the floor. Because in warehousing, probably they don't need. I mean, they they won't be able to maintain it f f well. So it's usually abuse of the floor is more than the usage of the floor. In textile. It's again textile. It's PU or EPU. I mean, we, there are, we have just selected it, and we'll come back how we select on this. In dairies, in commercial buildings, it's uh, it's terra floor or floor ad. This is terrazzo floor, and uh, show, show that again. Show, show that. This is a terrazzo floor, and uh, the thickness ranges from about. 6 to 12 mm and it is very very hard and durable like we can give even a lifetime warranty for this. And we can give any color even the architect can give us any uh, with his wildest imagination he can give some various colors we can adopt that. We can embed glass beads on this. We can give you a in the night also, it will give you a very glossy finish. Anything can be done, and but it is very costly. Like it is, range starts from about 4000 rupees per square meter to about 20,000 rupees per square meter. So it is, but it is a lifetime product. You do not, you need not do anything more than this, and it is a product which is well accepted abroad because of cost reasons in India it few take only few takers are there. Yeah I mean I, uh, do you need to have some references or something yeah okay. Show some yeah case no no not case study like I mean some of uh, places where we have done these uh, toppings are in uh, in the automobile sectors these are some of the areas where we have done our floorings. In engineering industries, these are some of the areas we have done our floorings. These are in pharmaceutical industries. And these are some government uh, uh, institutions where we have done in BHEL, Nuclear Power Corporation, HAL, in Ordnance Factory. You know, these are some of the. Uh, and this uh, this shows the, uh, the the I mean the execution capability of our company, like what we have done, the best we have done in the shortest time. Like we have done more than 70 to 75,000 square feet. In, a, in 72 hours, that is in, uh, in Toyota Bangalore, more than 1 lakh square feet in about 55 hours, that is in Mahindras and in Volkswagen, we have done about more than 7 lakh square feet in about 25 days. And these are some of the photographs of uh, different floorings whatever we spoke about. We can take questions 
simultaneously if uh, these are just photographs probably. I just want to finish off with some more commercial products. Uh, this is a it's called deco flake where we can add some flake with when it got colors. This comes under commercial flooring and it can be used for uh, your pantry areas and uh, any uh, site where the architect specifies for a different kind of a look and things like that. And uh, we can have n number of colors and combinations. So this is one such uh, deco floor we have got a black and white pigments and similarly this has got a blue and white. We can have a densely arranged blue or or a light this thing that, that depends upon the customer's choice. Here this is a special flooring it is called phosphorescent flooring wherein it will absorb light in the morning and emit in the evenings. The advantage is goes for mostly safety wherein you can draw your lines. Suppose suddenly there is a power failure this will emit light and you, you, you know where to walk or it will lead you to the exit place. So this is a very revolutionary product. This is a chemical coating it is a clear coating on the uh, surface it is called EPN 100. Uh, it is an overlap epoxy and uh, we can recommend for any harsh chemicals be it an acid or an alkali it really works well. And on a typically laid epoxy or polyurethane floor it is a clear coating which comes from a 500 micron to 1 mm thick and it once this is done it, it takes care of any kind of chemical which falls on this. So this is an epoxy screed as he earlier told you and this is a polyurethane screed the difference is if you hammer this it will it tends to break but if you hammer this nothing will happen it will rebound but the strength is as good as this. So this is a polyurethane based this is an epoxy based. So he was talking about three layers this is a primer layer this is a screed could be an epoxy polyurethane screed again the primer can be epoxy primer polyurethane primer and this top coating is self leveling epoxy top coat could be polyurethane it, it can be polyasphatic anything. So basically it comes of a primer screed and a top coat. And this is a typical uh, car park flooring it will have some roughness because it is done on the exterior area and any oil spillages from the car we should not uh, slip and fall. And we recommend we do a similar flooring for many of the industries where oil comes out of the machines when people walk they tend to skid and fall. So in industries we call this anti skid flooring and many of the uh, engine shops and uh, maybe Hyundai or Daimler we recommend this kind of flooring because this takes care of uh, the safety aspects. And this is also a type of terrazzo flooring. So we can give various colors. Okay. This is our sealant, polyurethane sealant. You can see, like uh, on the joints of any concrete, we lay it, and normally we can give in various colors also. So, suppose we do a green color flooring this side, we can give you a green color sealant. So, it will match. So you will not notice that there is a sealant done here. I think most of it has been covered if any questions is there you can. Uh I would like to thank Mr. Suresh Kumar and uh, Mr. Sarvanabhava of uh, Swati Engineering for a very nice talk. Uh, we could understand the differences between the different polymers used in flooring. Uh, I would like to ask you where would you use flo polymer flooring generally we are used to tile flooring. Uh, what are the advantages with respect to tiles? Okay, uh, the polymeric flooring is basically used in places where your abrasion resistance, your uh, where your usage of the floor is going to be very harsh. I mean, industrial environment, for example, 
and that is where you do not want a tile to be used because it might break, it might crack and there are a lot of joints in tiles where a lot of industries do not want joints in the tile because of dirt accumulation, oil seepages might happen. So a polymeric flooring will give you jointless uh, flooring, absolutely no joints in between, it is uh, monolithic and it has got a very good abrasion resistance and impact resistance. So you, you tend to go for uh, polymeric flooring in areas where the abuse is more and uh, in an industrial environment mostly they go for this particular flooring than tiles. For example, if you take forklift movements, uh, if it comes across a joint, it will tend to break the tile. Whereas if it is a seamless flooring like epoxy or polyurethane, the friction is very less and it keeps moving fast and uh, there is no chance of breaking. Hence tiles are not suited for industries and uh, that is the reason we use a lot of epoxies and polyurethanes for industries. Is there some type of environment where you cannot use polymer flooring? No, I do not think so. You, the, the, in any place you can use it. It is not that you the cannot use it. It is only right. how we apply and how we make use of it, I think. You can use it in any, any environment. And in terms of uh, polyurethane uh, flooring, yeah. we see that it is becoming more and more popular. Yeah. What is the difference between the coating when you have an interior application and when you have an exterior application where you can have heat and water and so on? See polyurethane, there are two kinds of polyurethanes. One is aromatic polyurethane, the other one is called aliphatic polyurethane. The aromatic polyurethanes are the ones which are used in a, in a place where there is no sunlight directly on it. It is inside a room or something like that. Whereas when you want to use it on exterior surface, you use an aliphatic polyurethane where it gives the UV resistant also. So basic difference is that when you choose something for external, you choose an aliphatic. When you want it anywhere inside, you choose an aromatic uh, system, that is it. Uh, you, have, you were discussing that uh, some flooring is self leveling. What is the meaning of the term self leveling? See when, when you see uh, normal coatings when you see it, when you do it on the wall or with a brush or something, they are actually a thin film which they form might be about 50 to 100 microns and it is done with a roller or something. When you see epoxy is self leveling, it is not done with rollers. It is basically a very viscous material and it has got a tendency to flow itself and level itself. Like for example, the best self leveling material you can see is water. It sort of whichever shape the container is. No, no, it is viscous also because uh, see, that is a that is a speciality of it. No, no, that's see, okay. Now, for the best uh, viscous, I mean, self-leveling thing is uh, water. It sort of finds this. The top surface is going to be level, whichever container it is, and that kind of system only we are uh, replicating in an epoxy self-leveling system. Basically, making it leveled by itself on the top surface is getting level in material of what is the bottom. So it takes a datum and then levels the top. Uh, that is called a self leveling uh, uh, coating. Sir, when you are discussing about uh, densified concrete, uh, concrete flooring, that is the polished concrete surface yeah. flooring, uh, the in that place we do not want roughness in that surface, but uh, in case of pol uh, polishing, the slippery effect will be uh, there. What you no, yeah, that is a good one. See, we have uh, in a concrete surface when you are actually densifying the concrete, basically you are not. Uh, you are densifying the concrete means you are actually b blocking all the porosities in the concrete. Once any surface the porosities are uh, filled and then you try to sort of uh, buff it, it gives you a sheen. If the sheen is basically uh, so that it does not allow water or anything to go into it. But when you walk over it with, with a barefoot or with a shoe, it does not slip at all. And we have done it in n number of places. And we have even tested with uh, the forklifts making it even with by pouring water or oil and then running the forklift on top of it and breaking it, it gives a very good result. So it is not a slippery floor at all in fact. For example, we have done the same floor, polished density floors in Daimler for 1 lakh square meters. So it is a huge area you are talking about, 10 lakh square feet. So nothing has happened, till, till date we have not got any issues on safety, it is a good question. Right? Yeah, and anyway. yeah, okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. <laughs> anyway.